Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go over some things that are not standard today on a tractor that you may be looking to purchase. And so whether it's John Deere, Kubota, could be anybody else, just things to keep your eye out for. Um, it's going to vary from model to model, series to series, that kind of thing, but pay attention and make sure you know what you're buying. Welcome to Good Works Tractors. From snow to mow, Good Works Tractors is the place to go. Shop goodworkstractors.com, subscribe to our channel below, like our Facebook page, and stay tuned. Thanks for watching. All right, so we got some tractors in different shops here, but uh, we'll kind of bounce around and I'm not going to pay too much attention to the garden tractors here. This is more about the subcompacts and the compact tractors uh, that are for sale and what's out there in the used market or even the new uh, market if you're shopping around and getting quotes from dealers there. And so first thing that you want to pay attention to is whether or not your tractor has a quick attach bucket or not. So, and by quick attach, this means that the bucket can come on and off real quickly. All right. So with a set of pins like the John Deere quick attach version or the more universal style skid steer quick attach bucket, which is what this Kubota has on it. And now I added this loader brand new to this Kubota. I bought it with just the mower deck and had the loader added on. And standard configuration is going to be a pinned on bucket, which means you're not going to have these quick release brackets on here. The bucket's basically going to be, for the most part, fixed to the loader. And so you can't quickly remove it and put on a set of pallet forks or a snow pusher or a grapple or anything else. So this makes it a lot more versatile. So when you're looking in the market, most folks want that quick attach bucket on there. Okay, so there are some folks that don't care. They're never going to use their bucket for anything else, or maybe they'll just get a set of of uh, clamp on pallet forks for the bucket and call it good, but it's just a, a way to get by, but not the right way to do it in my opinion. So that's, that's step one there. Verify it has a quick attach bucket or not. Know what you're buying, okay? There's a value difference there. That quick attach bucket on here to upgrade, it was a $500 price difference, okay? So versus the standard pin on version, all right? Next one up. You can't see this one, but there's liquid ballast in them there tires. All right, and so that is not standard on tractors, okay? Most of them are just going to have good old air in them. So lots of times, though, maybe, well, I shouldn't say lots of times, maybe 10 to 15% of the time, I'm going to have a tractor come in with liquid ballast, easy enough to check, just um, open up the, uh, the uh, uh, nozzle there, and then stick a little a key, I normally stick the end of a key in there, just depress it really quickly, and you'll see the uh, fluid come out. So I think this one has it in there. Let me grab a key here real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And so I'm just going to go ahead and take this off. And now this is near the top, but it is underneath. Typically ballast is going to be filled up right to above the rim. Okay. That prevents the sloshing effect as, as the tractor's moving. If it's above here, it's maintaining a, a water line. So there's not as much sloshing versus if it was down here, it would constantly be sloshing back and forth and, and being a real not a comfortable ride and that kind of thing. So anyway, we're going to take that off. Try not to get myself covered in here. This is, this is beet juice or rim guard that's in here. You can see that come out just like that. Easy way to check. So if uh, somebody you're buying a tractor from says they don't know if the tires are filled or not, well, just ask them to do that and they'll be able to uh, verify. So that's, that's beet juice or rim guard. It's stinky, smells like soy sauce. It's disgusting. Um, it's kind of sticky as well. So I'm glad I got that on my keys. That's, that's really great. I'm going to go ahead and dry my hands off here. But easy way to tell, you know, that's going to add value also to your tractor. Okay. So it depends on the size of the tires. Sometimes it's maybe a couple hundred bucks, but if it's a larger tire, like a four or five series, it could be five, 600 bucks. Of course, you can always do things yourself, add washer fluid. If you're in the South where it's not going to freeze, add water, that kind of thing too, but something to keep in mind. All right, loaders. This is a fixed loader. This loader does not easily come off. All right, we're not talking about the bucket. We're talking about the loader now. Okay, this loader is bolted on. There we go. There's some bolts. <laughs> I was trying to find them there for a second. So it's not a quick, quick park loader, as you would say. Now, the larger the tractor you go, the fewer folks are going to find a need to remove a mower. On a smaller tractor that you have a mid-mount mower on, remove a loader, I should say. On a smaller tractor where you have a mid-mount mower, like uh, this 2025 or a BX, for instance, lots of times you want to mow your lawn. You don't want to mow it with the loader on. It's a bouncy ride. It's not good for all the pins and bushings on the loader itself. So you want to be able to quickly take that loader off. This is a quick park loader on here. Same thing on this 2025. Okay, so verify that. 
Make sure it suits your needs on what you're looking to do. Next up, rear remotes, third functions, power beyond, that kind of thing. Nothing on this tractor, nothing on this tractor, nothing on that tractor, okay? See back here. These are not additional functions. When you see two SCVs, two selective control valves, well, two outlets here make one SCV, okay? So you have two of them here. You have one and two. Each set is one, okay? So that's going to control your loader. They're de dedicated to run the up and down, the raising and lowering of your loader, and the, the tilting and rolling and curling and all that of the bucket, all right? We'll go look at my tractor over here. I've got it over here, and you can see what rear remotes look like and what are available. And again, we keep all our tractors inside, so if you're shopping for a tractor and you want to come check us out, if it's cold out or rainy or whatever, you know, we added all these lights. Thank you to my friend Jason Boma, the master industrial electrician, for helping me install all these lights in here. So here's my tractor. You can see the plethora, the gaggle, the flock of, of remotes in the back. This is a a remote here, this is a remote, this is a remote, this is power beyond, a different type of remote, that's for like a backhoe, something with its own controls, but those are all extra, and that is a lot of money. I'm not bragging, I'm not happy I had to pay a lot of money, but uh, I wanted to be able to show folks what this stuff's all about, and so, you know, I hope to recoup my cost at some point in the future on it. I also have the top and tilt link, that's a good reason why you might want additional remotes okay so it takes one remote to run the the top and so you can angle this in and out it takes another remote to have, have it pitch side to side that cylinder will go up and down and so it'll raise the side or lower that side that kind of thing okay third function on here which is this one right here that is an electro hydraulic third function and tied into right on here the pump control all right and so I could either plug something into the back here and run it off the back like a, a snowblower and rotate the chute, for instance, um, or I can have it plugged in right there and it's connected to these lines that are all the way up front here, right there. So I can add on a grapple if I want to. So I have that third function to be able to open and close the grapple. So when I push that button on the joystick, it's going to open or close the grapple and I don't lose my other two functions of the loader this way and raising and lowering. All right. So I could put a hydraulic angling snow blade on the front and angle it this way and not lose the other functionality of it, all right? While we're here, deluxe grill guard, or even a grill guard is not always standard, all right? Sometimes you're not gonna have any grill guard at all. Most tractors will have them, but uh, don't count on it, okay? Next up, mid PTO. What's a mid PTO? Well, it's gonna be the PTO that's under the belly. It's gonna run a belly mower. It's gonna run a front mount snow blower. Some tractors, like that one with the cab and the other unit over there, you cannot add a mid-PTO. It's not possible to put a mid-PTO. This tractor here, you can add it. I did not get it. I have no need for that. I'm not going to pay six grand for a front-mounted snowblower. I need my loader all the time. I don't want to have to hassle with taking the, the loader off and putting the blower on and vice versa. That's just, I don't have time for that. But you can add, if I were to sell this tractor, one of the, the features about it that I would say is you can add a mid-PTO if you want to. If you want to end up getting a a belly mower for it or the front mount snow blower a front mount broom that kind of thing it's something you can add on after the fact which is not standard okay cabs let's talk about cabs you cannot add on a factory cab after the fact you have to get it from the factory or purchase the tractor that already has it on there okay aftermarket cabs you cannot add air conditioning to let's come over here and take a look you can only have heat Okay, these are things I'm trying to educate buyers. A lot of folks have misconceptions or maybe they just looked around and saw a tractor and think all tractors come set up that way. There's your, your uh, air conditioning on the left and your heat on the right, okay? Take a look at this factory cab. It's, you know, it comes from the factory this way. It's just integrated, it looks fantastic, you know? So, but that's something to keep in mind because a lot of folks want to add a cab, you know, and, and they think, well, Oh, it's going to have air conditioning, right? No, it's not. So like the John Deere 1 Series and the John Deere 2 Series, you cannot add a cab to. It's going to be the 3 Series on up. Kubota, you can't add a cab to that series. You can add a, series, a cab to the uh, B Series and up. I'm talking factory cabs, so one that has air conditioning and heat. This is an aftermarket cab. The style of cab you could add to 
a 3E series, for instance, which is what this tractor is, 3032E, or to a 2 series, or a BX series, okay, or a John Deere 1 series. It's going to have heat, okay, it'll have a heater, I'll open this door up, you can see here. All right, there's your heater, all right, but no air conditioning. Now you can take these doors off in the summer. They just lift right out, okay, they're going to lift right out of these, uh, these pin slots right here, okay. So you can take those doors off. Shoot, you could even take the front, front window off if you wanted to in the rear window. And just have it act as a, a sun canopy. I'd probably leave the front and the rear on, though, okay? You have plenty of airflow. Have the sun canopy, and also if it's raining, you'll have some good coverage there, too. You can still be out doing work. What else? Let's talk about mower decks, all right? A drive over mower deck is not standard. Well, unless you're on one of the... Uh, most of the newer John Deere 1025s. And so these ramps here, if you're looking online, that'll signify it's a drive over deck. All right. Pretty easy to distinguish that. Take a look at the Kubota, for instance. Most of them are not drive over. There is an option to add an easy over system where you have to pull out these little ramps. You'll see like a thick black bar that goes all the way across. You can pull out these little ramps that go down this way and that way. Um, I have not heard rave reviews about that, but uh, this is also not going to have auto connect on the PTO. And so you're going to be reaching up underneath to manually connect and disconnect that PTO way back there. Removal of these decks is a piece of cake. Anybody can tell you that. You pull the deck out from the side. Putting it back on is another story. It's not the end of the world. I'm not going to make it that. But it is definitely not as easy as the auto connect that's available on the 1025 RLC. I'm going to lower this deck down and see if you can't see it or not underneath here. But this PTO is going to attach and detach automatically. So that's the shaft right there. You never have to monkey around with that. The other end of it is tied into this contraption right there. You can see that silver circle there. That's going to be stay right there on the linkage. And then the other end of the gearbox there has a, um, a male side that slides in and out as you drive on and off of the mower deck. Super awesome. Again, not standard. That's a seven, eight hundred dollar upgrade typically to have that auto connect. Check it out if you're buying a John Deere. You want to know if it has that or not. Okay. But so it depends on the series of tractor you're looking at. Okay. Depends on the brand. But there's a lot of things to verify. You know, make a checklist. You know, just get your checklist out there. Another thing to look at. This is a reinforced bucket, a heavy duty bucket. Okay, it's got heavy duty side plates here it's got a reinforced top plate it's got uh, provisions for a bolt-on cutting edge here it's got holes in it okay not standard i will say on the newer kubota subcompacts you're at least going to have this provision to add on a, a bolt-on cutting edge pretty cool i like that i think that's a great idea so it costs money to drill holes so they're they're giving you a little bit more value there a standard bucket okay this is a heavy duty bucket i'll show you a john deere standard bucket which is going to look like this right here okay so there's a single thickness on the wall single thickness on the top no provisions now you can get a clamp on a clamp on uh, cutting edge heavy hitch sells one i highly recommend that check out tractor tablet tim if you want to see it in action too but single thickness on the top here all right provisions though for a uh, couple of hooks if you want to get some ken's bolt-on hooks highly recommend those or a receiver put that on there show you this up close so you can see that top plate that's reinforced double thickness there okay and these buckets are virtually indestructible sure somebody has destroyed one and i'll hear about it but uh, they're built they're built very well so this is this is actually the bucket that's off of my tractor over there i just had it on here uh, tractor time with tim was using it and so i sent this bucket down with them Anyways, hope that helps. Again, make a checklist if you're, if you're shopping for a used tractor. You know, you want to verify whether it's buying a tractor from me, buying a tractor from anybody else, getting one from a dealer new, you know, when you're ordering one. Have it set up the way you want, okay? I, again, probably of all things, get the quick attach, okay, on the bucket. Opens up a world of versatility. If you ever have to sell the tractor, a lot of people don't think they're ever going to sell it. They're going to own it for life. Well, guess what? Most of these people that uh, sold these tractors and I bought them probably thought the same thing. Things happen, life changes, circumstances change, needs change. Set it up the, the best way you can.
get the right tractor for you. Hope this helps. Thanks so much for watching. Check out goodworkstractors.com. Like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and have a great day.